Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to INFS 323 Research Methodology, which I believe you will find interesting reading. We are going to go through a series of lectures structured to be completed within 13 weeks. At the end of every lecture, I will provide you with a handout. I expect that you read these handouts thoroughly alongside the relevant chapters of the prescribed textbook. Today we are going to take a look at our first lesson, which provides an overview of research. This course is designed to equip you in the field of information studies, records management, knowledge management, and related disciplines with the knowledge of the concepts and principles of social science research. The importance of research within these disciplines should not be underestimated, as research skills are prerequisite for those who want to work successfully in the information field. After completing this session, you should be able to, one, define and explain research, identify the uses and value of research, identify and list the types of research, and outline and discuss the stages of the research process. The topics to be covered in this session are, one, defining and explaining research. Two, the purposes of research. Three, the characteristics of research. Four, classification, stroke types of research. And finally, the research process. These are your prescribed texts, which I expect you to read alongside the handouts I will provide. Let us begin topic one by defining and explaining research. What is research? As we go through these definitions, pay attention and take note of the terms which I have highlighted. We are going to go by the definition given by Grinnell. According to Grinnell, the word research is composed of two syllables, re and search. The dictionary defines re, which is a prefix, to mean again, anew, or over and over again. And search, as a verb meaning to examine closely and carefully, to test and try or to probe. When you put these words together, you form a noun, research. And research describes a careful, systematic, patient study and investigation in some field of knowledge undertaken to establish facts and principles. Benz also defines research as a systematic investigation to find answers to a problem. Benz also defines research as follows a systematic investigation to find answers to a problem. I hope you are taking note of the words I have highlighted. According to Kalinda, a very renowned writer in research methods, scientific research is a systematic, controlled, empirical, and critical investigation of propositions about the presumed relationship between various phenomena. Redman also says that research is an art of scientific investigation. It is a systematized effort to gain new knowledge. That is Redman. Let's look at what Molly said. He says, Research is best conceived 
as the process of arriving at dependable solutions to problems through the planned and systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data. The best research is that which is reliable, verifiable, and exhaustive, so that it provides information which we have confidence in. Now, from the beginning, I indicated that a lot of authors have given various definitions about research. Now, this is because the concept research is a multidimensional one. And so, no single definition could adequately explain the concept well. In order to understand the meaning of research, therefore, we should bring together a number of definitions and determine the thread that runs through all these definitions. By so doing, we will be able to understand the subject matter. Did you take a look at the keywords I asked you to look at? Some of these keywords are systematic, empirical, rigor, reliable, controlled, investigation, painstaking, careful, reliable, verifiable, etc. These keywords, if considered together, provide a common ground for our understanding of the nature of research. In summing up, and following from what we have seen from the definitions, we can confidently say that research is searching for an unknown fact or event, but involves more than merely searching for what is unknown. It is a painstaking search carried out systematically in an attempt to first find answers to new or existing problems, or two, simply delving into the unknown, that is for test of new knowledge. So far, so good for the definition and meaning of research. Let us run through the purposes of research, of what value is research to society. Following from the definitions, we can outline what research seeks to achieve. Who say and who say identify the following purposes of research. One, according to them, research seeks to find answers to questions or solutions to problems. We saw this in the definitions. It also seeks to discover and interpret new facts. Research test theories and revises acceptable theories or laws in the light of new evidence. It seeks an understanding and or of an explanation for an unknown issue, event, or phenomenon. Again, it seeks to obtain additional information to enrich existing knowledge. It also seeks to make predictions. And lastly, it also emancipates or empower people to change their situation. These are some of the purposes of research outlined by Hussey and Hussey. Research has some characteristics. These characteristics are found in the words that define research. For instance, systematic, rigorous, valid, controlled, and reliable. Now, as I said early on, these key words in the definition of research define the character of research. They help our understanding of the nature of research. For instance, the word systematic, careful, painstaking, diligent investigation used to describe research indicate that research is an activity which is not conducted in a haphazard manner or half-heartedly. There are processes 
and procedures to follow. And we must exercise care and diligence in every step of the process until we come to a conclusion. Rigorous means we have to be meticulous when undertaking research. By being meticulous, you are trying to ensure that the processes and procedures you are following are relevant, appropriate, and justified. Another word is control, which describes the characteristic of research. The concept of control implies that in exploring causality in relation to two variables, we must ensure that other variables or factors do not affect our results. Sometimes research is conducted to establish relationship amongst variables. We should be able to ensure that there are no other variables which will affect the relationship between the variables we are studying. Reliability, by this, it is expected that the findings of your research should be dependable. Let's move on to types and classification of research. Types and classification, or types stroke classification of research. There are four dimensions by which research is classified. And this is given by Kumar. These are the purpose of doing research, the intended uses of research, how it treats time, that is a time dimension in research, and then the data to be collected. So according to Ranjit Kumar, these are the dimensions along which we can classify research. Let's consider the first classification. That is from the perspective of purpose. Under this classification, we have descriptive research, exploratory research, and explanatory research. Let's take a look at descriptive research. What is descriptive research? Descriptive research simply seeks to describe a phenomenon. It is interested in what questions rather than why. Further, it stimulates explanation rather than trying to explain. Explanatory research. This type of research is involved in explaining why something happens and assessing the causal relationship between variables. So explanatory research goes a step further. It seeks to explain what happens to the variables under observation. So we see here that explanatory research is not interested only in what happened, but also seeks to know how it happened and why it happened. Explanatory research, therefore, goes beyond the facts. Exploratory research. This takes place where there is little or no prior knowledge of the phenomenon under investigation. It means we are delving into the unknown. In this regard, we are not sure of what we will find. We may discover something or we may discover nothing at all. Hence, the findings from exploratory research may trigger further investigation by means of generating hypotheses for further inquiry. So we say here that exploratory research is undertaken so that we can gain a better understanding of a phenomenon. We use the word exploratory because there is not informa enough information about the topic we are investigating. Two, let's classify research from the perspective of use or application. From the perspective of use or application. When we classify research from this perspective, we have 
two types of research. These are pure research and basic research. Bear in mind that pure research is also known as basic research. So we have pure or basic research and applied research. Pure research takes place to explore a particular concept or issue without regard to a specific problem and may be carried out to simply gain a better understanding of the overall concept. It focuses on knowledge acquisition. It seeks to refute or support existing theories that explain how the social world operates. In the nutshell, pure research seeks to advance the frontiers of knowledge. It does not seek to solve existing problems of society. On the other hand, applied research is undertaken to solve a, a practical problem or provide solutions to practical problems we face in society. Let us now classify research from the per perspective of time. That is the time dimension of classification. And at this classification, there are two types of research studies. The first is cross-sectional studies and the second is longitudinal. For cross-sectional studies, observations are taken at one point in time. This means the researcher collects his data at one particular point in time. Explanation occurs by examining differences across the units of analysis. Let me use an example to illustrate this point. Let's consider the hypothesis that a worker satisfaction increases worker productivity. A worker satisfaction increases worker productivity. This is measured for 100 individuals in an organization at one point in time. This means that the researcher is undertaking this study at a particular point in time. This is tested by the correlation between satisfaction and productivity for 100 individuals. Longitudinal study. If the research is not cross-sectional, then it is longitudinal. For longitudinal studies, observations are taken more than once. For instance, over a five-year period. The researcher then explains his findings by examining the differences for the five-year period. Example, worker satisfaction and worker productivity are measured for 100 individuals for over a five-year period. The hypothesis is tested by examining the changes in worker satisfaction and changes in pro productivity across time over the 100 individuals. Take note and pay attention to this. All that we said was this, that with this type of research, observation is taken more than once. For instance, the researcher can decide to determine the relationship between the variables in one particular year. He continues to do that the following year and continues for five years. At every point in time, he comes to compare the differences of the, of, of the observation within the five-year period. Next, we classify research by data collection techniques. And under this classification, we have quantitative research and qualitative research. We shall come to learn more about these types of research during the course of our studies. Now, but let me say that the main quantitative techniques include experiments, surveys, and correlational studies. And examples of the major qualitative techniques are ethnography, case study, and phenomenology. Ladies and gentlemen, let us move on to topic five, which talks about the stages in the research process. What are the stages in the research process? 
The research process is simply the steps we follow when we want to conduct research. And in the social sciences, various approaches suggest different steps. But for our purposes, we focus on the following. The first is selection of topic and defining the research problem. The second is reviewing the relevant literature. Third, clarifying of research questions and or formulating hypotheses, and then developing your theoretical framework, and then crafting your research design, then collecting data, analyzing the data, discussing the findings, and then providing a conclusion. Let's go through these one by one. Stage one, that is selection of the topic. This is a crucial stage in the research process. The topic needs to be concise and informative. It should cover the essence of what the project seeks to achieve. When selecting your topic, it is important to consult people who are knowledgeable in what you want to study. The topics we select come from various sources. They may come from our personal experiences, they may come from an issue of national concern, or they may also come from previous studies conducted by other students and researchers. The second step concerns the reviewing of related or relevant literature. A literature review essentially consists of critically reading evaluating and organizing existing literature on the topic to assess the state of knowledge in the area. Generally, this is done alongside the development of your theoretical and conceptual framework. That is stages four of the research process. The next stage is clarification of research questions or formulating hypotheses. Research questions and our hypotheses are formulated to guide the conduct of the study. They must be clear, and your hypothesis must be testable. Stage four, development of the theoretical and conceptual framework. Your theoretical framework simply refers to the underlying theoretical approach that you adapt to underpin your study whilst your conceptual framework defines and organizes the important concept within your study. We shall come back to look at these in greater detail. The next stage is crafting your research design. The next stage is crafting your research design. What do we mean by research design? Now, it is simply the framework or the plan for your study. The framework or the plan for your study. And in crafting your research design, there are a few questions you need to ask and answer. The first is, one, what research strategy will be used? What research strategy will be used? Where will the data come from? That is, where are you going to obtain your data? How will the data be collected and analyzed? And then lastly, when will each stage of the research be carried out? Again, we shall come to look at research design in detail during the course of this lecture. Stage six relates to data collection. What is data collection? Now, first, you need to consider the nature and type of data to be collected. Is it quantitative data or qualitative data? Secondly, you need to determine the instrument to be used. For instance, are you going to use questionnaire, interview, or observation? Let me state here that 
the most commonly used data collection methods in scholarly research in the social sciences are the questionnaire, interview, and observation. Seven, data analysis and discussion of the findings. The data you collect in stage six needs to be analyzed to provide answers to your research questions. In your discussion of the results, reference should be made back to the literature reviewed in stage two. For example, how do the findings add to this literature? Do they support the literature? If not, what are the possible reasons and why? Conclusions should relate back to the focused research question. You can evaluate how successful you have been in achieving your research objectives and highlight the strengths and weaknesses of the research. You may also want to make recommendations for further research. In summary, we have in this lecture provided an overview of research. We define and explain what research is and went further to consider the purposes and characteristics of research. We then classified research along four dimensions, taking note of the different types of research under each classification. Lastly, we outlined and discussed the stages of the research process. I expect that you go over your slides again and read the handouts on the overview of research. As I said from the beginning of the lecture, your handouts should be read alongside the prescribed textbooks. Thank you.